Bim, guess what? It's Friday. And that could only mean one thing. It's time for what a week that was. And what a week it's been. We've had an autumn, autumn statement. We've had, um, well, almost World War Three. We've had um, lots of stuff going on. Um, well, all over the place. Including the World Cup starting soon. And other things. Anyway, let's start with some good news, shall we? Is there any good news? I don't think there actually is. Oh yeah, there is. There is some good news. We're alright. We're alright. Don't worry, folks. There is good news to be had. Uh, particularly if you're Ukrainian. Although, sadly short-lived. Uh, but there were scenes of joy last weekend when the Ukrainian troops entered um, the city of uh, Kherson uh, after the evacuation, or rather the removal, of the Russians. Um, doesn't matter how the Russians left, whether they were forced out, whether they left of their own accord, or whether they were uh, they had to go because they had no food. It doesn't really matter. The main thing is they're gone. The bad news is, of course, that you have to pay for anything that happens like that. Uh, also at the weekend, we had King Charles doing his first um, remembrance uh, duties as king um, at the Cenotaph. Um, very solemn. And you can see he was getting emotional as well because his mother, the Queen, did actually serve in the army and she's obviously passed away. So he was only not only celebrating or remembering uh, the soldiers who've died uh, in battle and since, but obviously his own mother as well. So, uh, yeah, uh, you've got to feel for him. But um, hopefully onwards and upwards now for him. Sunday also saw um, everyone's favourite politician. Oh, that's going to leave it wide open, isn't it? No, it's Jeremy Hunt, and I'm lying when I say he's everyone's favourite politician. Uh, basically saying that there's going to be more, cap, uh, more taxes, cuts to uh, energy bills will help will continue... Um, and it will be honest and fair to the uh, the British public. And that was talking on the Laurie uh, Klunsman, Klunsberg show on uh, BBC. And, well, we'll find out later what became of that. There was also a tragedy in America where two uh, World War II planes at the Dallas Air Show um, collided, uh, killing all six people on board of both planes. Thankfully nobody on the ground was hurt. There was also the midterm elections which we're still waiting for results for going on but apparently uh, Donald Trump's party thought they were going to wipe the floor with Biden's party which normally happens when it's halfway through um, a, a session of you know, like in Britain you know when there's a by-election usually whoever's in power loses a by-election or gets a, a, a less majority because whoever's in power isn't very good, whether it's Labour or Tories. Um, so people protest by voting for the other one during the by-election. And the same thing happens mid-terms in America, but it's not. Not to the degree that they thought, anyway. Hopefully we'll have full, proper results um, next week. That said, um, there may be a few other bits and pieces coming along in the old... Um, Meanwhile in America bit, which I know you like. Everyone likes Meanwhile in America. Um, meanwhile, the English cricket team, you know, the ones that have been absolutely rubbish, they won the T20 World Cup. Well done them. Of course, I have to confess that I have no idea what the uh, T20 is. I know it's cricket, but that's about all I know. And I don't really care either, I'll be honest with you. I just, I, I don't understand cricket and why people play it or watch it. Mind you, I watch Formula One, so what can I say? Um, but it's not a I do watch, I'll be honest. Anyway, so yeah, well done to the cricket team for being T20 champions. Uh, there was a tragedy in uh, Istanbul. Um, there was a, a bomb explosion uh, which killed six people and injured many in the Turkish capital. Um, I don't think we found out who was actually responsible for it, but fingers crossed uh, they will do. And some woman, and they, they've arrested her, but that's about as far as it's gone. But anyway, we'll find out, we'll find out. Meanwhile, President Biden met the President of China, aka newish dictator. They spent three hours uh, in meetings, uh, closed behind doors, obviously. 
And um, yeah, they, they, well, according to Biden, they actually got on quite well. Apparently I'm online streaming. Good. Um, but, <laughs> but yeah, it's one of them things. Uh, Biden's not the brightest spark and uh, China are not someone you can trust. So uh, we'll have to wait and see. I'm still fretful that uh, they're going to actually try and take Taiwan or regain Taiwan, depending on how you want to look at it. Uh, meanwhile, uh, President Zelensky, he went to uh, Kyrgyzstan to uh, watch the uh, Ukrainian flag um, and uh, being risen and uh, sing the Ukrainian national anthem, which, to be fair, is dreadful. I mean, ours isn't great, but uh, yeah, it was. it's very, uh, very uh, East European, shall we say. And then you had a windy morning, windy, windy, windy person. Uh, and this time it was Christian Ronaldo, uh, who was talking to Piers Morgan, of all people. Uh, I assume he was talking to Piers Morgan on Talk TV because he knew no one watches Talk TV or Piers Morgan or anything. However, they rather cleverly um, let out snippets of the interview, which basically said he, he felt like he'd been stabbed in the back by Manchester United, that the manager didn't like him, that he don't think he'd, he'd end up playing for... Uh, United ever again um, and he wants to leave and it's a nightmare and he should have gone to City and all the ground and everything is so outdated it's not changed in the last 40 years and blah 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 whingy whingy morning morning whingy 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 and you know what it reminded me of Princess Diana and her chat that she did to the BBC um, where she did the windy morning, windy, windy, windy morning, morning, windy, windy, windy bit. Uh, and yeah, uh, Ronaldo and Diana, who knew that uh, they were so close together? Um, <laughs> in a weird way. Uh, going back to uh, Biden and all that, you've got to remember that uh, they were at the G20. Now, the G20 is a very important thing where all the leaders of the uh, top 20 um, governments, uh, as in the economies, the size of the economy, that's how you're rated, go there and um, they, they basically sort everything out. I mean, they never do anything. But didn't stop Zelensky um, talking to them all and asking for more weapons and all that and saying that they've got Russia on the run now uh, and they need more weapons to stop Russia attacking them and, and doing this, that and the other. So fingers crossed they will get enough to keep pushing Russia out. But then, whilst the G20 was on, we had uh, a bit of a worry uh, in Poland. Um, now, not that Poland, we need to worry about Poland normally, but this happened. Uh, as seen in Nine News Australia, a, officials have confirmed Russian missiles have crossed into Poland, a NATO country. Both Polish media and a senior US Intelligence source have reported the strikes killed two people in what is a serious development to the Russian-Ukraine war. And this was like in the middle of the night. Um, it was uh, reported all over the world, all over the news and everything. Um, we got pictures like that which showed where the, uh, the missile landed. And I'm getting messages thinking, uh, saying, will you actually be able to broadcast on Friday or will we all be dead? Um, and kind of looking at it thinking... It can't be right. I know Putin's daft, but he's not stupid. He's not going to bomb um, Poland. Uh, no matter how how angry he gets, he's not going to do that because he knows if he, if he bombs Poland, he will be dead, uh, as will the rest of the world. Um, anyway, they looked into it for uh, uh, about 24 hours, 36 hours. Turned out it was more than likely... Uh, although Russia was bombing um, Ukraine at the time, it's more likely a misfired uh, anti-air missile from Ukraine that's gone up and, for some reason, gone off course and ended up just over the border in Poland and sadly killed these two people. Now, fingers crossed, that is what happened and that we don't need to worry about it anymore, but it is a worry. Um, and we don't, we know it, we need to uh, 
we need to take a, a bit of a step back and, and not just keep jumping over the precipice uh, all the time. Um, so yeah, millions within Ukraine have lost all power. Uh, they've got no electricity uh, and they've also, a lot of them, not got water because Putin, when they were doing the airstrikes, were targeting, as well as, you know, apartment blocks where civilians live, um, they're also attacking the infrastructure yet again. Um, power stations, water treatment plants, um, gas um, storage areas, all that kind of thing. Uh, and he's saying, oh, well, we're, we're doing it to attack the military. Well, no, you're not. You're doing it because that's you're attacking civilians. And that is a war crime. And you're getting away with it again. And I don't understand why we're letting him get away with all this without any repercussions other than a few sanctions that don't seem to make any difference whatsoever. It's, I must admit, it's getting on my wick now, all this. It's like, for God's sake, we need to stand up to this guy and uh, kick, his, kick his head in. I genuinely kick his head in. I don't mean like, you know, oh, don't be a naughty boy. We need to we need to do something. And it needs to be done quick. Hopefully, it's getting kicked out of um, Ukraine, slowly but surely, so fingers crossed, that would be a, uh, a good thing. Um, meanwhile, back in Parliament, whilst Rishi Sunak is over in the G20, uh, telling the world that we need to sort out, well, the world, including the war, including global warming, including everything else, um, Dominic Raab, uh, who's like the one of the slimiest people you could probably ever meet, I've never met the guy, but he just comes across as a right slime ball. Uh, well, he's the Deputy Prime Minister, so he did uh, Prime Minister's Question Time. And for some reason, which I haven't quite figured out, the Labour Party stuck up Angela Rayner, you know, the shouty washerwoman, and because uh, she's the Deputy Leader of the Labour Party. And I'm like, well, why don't you just have Keith Starmer? Unless Keith Starmer's gone to the G20, which I can't see, or whatever, why was he not there? Uh, anyway, it was the two um, Deputy Leaders who were having their shouting match over the uh, the boxers. Not a lot was said that was worthy of being mentioned other than uh, Dominic Raab has been accused uh, for bullying uh, in previous jobs that he's had and is now in, under investigation not dissimilar to what um, our um, Sir G Gavin Williamson was last week. So with any luck Slimeball Dominic Raab will end up on the back benches sooner rather than later. It's a shame Angela won't go on their back benches as well. But anyway, we can live in hope. We can live in hope. Talking of living in hope, um, this is a, a very nice thing to see. Finally, the, uh, ow, oh, it was a cat. <laughs> the rocket going to the moon. Artemis has took off from NASA's uh, launch pad. It's been delayed, 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 and then delayed a bit more. Uh, finally, it's on its way. Uh, it's going to be up there for about four weeks, uh, getting on for a month. Um, fingers crossed, it will uh, it will all be okay, and we might be able to send people back to the moon, and um, maybe even get a settlement up there, like in space 1999. Uh, but they keep going on about, we need to send a person of colour and a woman up to the moon and I'm like well yeah but it's more important that you send people who are actually capable of doing it I'm not saying they're not but you can't just choose someone because of their sex or colour you, you can only choose someone because of their ability to do the job um, I mean I wouldn't care if it was all um, women or whatever as long as they're the right people to do the job and get there and back safely that's all that matters isn't it well in my opinion um, so the big day come, and it was just today, and it was uh, Jeremy Hunt, oh we love Jeremy Hunt, he's another slime ball, um, and he basically had his autumn statement. Now unusually for the autumn, autumn statement, um, they actually published it in a book, and it was 68 pages or thereabouts, um, which is quite significant really, and there was a lot in this. Uh, a lot more than what we were expecting and it had been kind of built up as being a, a dreadful thing that they had to do and it was going to be really difficult and really horrible 
so we had to expect the worst but I think doing that and then not giving us the worst was probably a clever plan but it, don't get me wrong it wasn't great um, it had fair to say mixed responses um, the, we are now officially in a recession um, taxes are going up uh, if you pay a high rate of tax uh, which is 45% 45p in a pound uh, you now start paying that when you when you earn £125,000 a year rather than £150,000 a year so that's going to put more people into that it's actually £125,000 but £125,000 but yeah uh, the energy uh, cost cap thing um, well they're, ex they're going to let that rise to three grand which means it's three times more than it was 18 months ago um, and that's going to be in April, so that's something else to look forward to. But the windfall from the oil companies, uh, BP, Shell, etc., uh, instead of taking 25%, twi twi they're going to take 35% of unexpected uh, profits until 2028. Uh, they're also going to give... Now, the people said, oh, it's going to be austerity, austerity, austerity. Now, there is some austerity because we have to pay money back that we've basically taken uh, to pay for Covid, i.e. all the furlough, all the grants for all the businesses and all that kind of thing, it's got to get paid back at some point and one assumed, or rather they assumed, that after um, Covid had died down, um, everything get back to normal, they get the money in the bank and they'll be away. Then we get the Ukraine war. So we've not been able to pay it back, so everyone thought everything's going to get cut, but no, he's actually going to give extra money for schools the NHS and social care. It's only, you know, a handful of a billion pounds a year each, but it's still considerably more than people expected. The national living wage is going to go up to £10.42, uh, pence, uh, and pensions are going up by the rate of inflation, uh, which is over 10%, uh, as well as the um, um, benefits that you get if you're unemployed. Um, so, again, much better than we were expecting. Everyone thought they were going to get frozen. Uh, the only issue I have, being a small business person, uh, the national living wage, if you're running a business, be it a retail outlet or a, a, a restaurant or a cafe or something like that, and you've got staff, all of a sudden your electricity's gone up, your uh, business rates are going up, uh, your wages are now going up, your raw materials are going up in costs, so people are going to have to make cuts. There was a guy being interviewed on the telly who worked in a chip shop. And he was like, yeah, but it's only got up to like £10.42. That's not enough to live on. And I'm like, well, if I was your boss, mate, I would probably reduce your hours. So you'd work less hours but get the same pay you're on now because we're not earning more money. And if you're working in a chip shop, you've got the fries on all day. You've got the, the pie warmers on all day. You've got all that going on. You've got the electric lights. Um, it's not a cheap place to run. And he'd be lucky if he has a job by Christmas. So, yeah, you've got to be careful what you wish for. Just getting loads of wage rises, it's nice. But it's going to put people into tax bans because the freezing where you start paying tax. But if minimum wage goes up and living wage goes up, more people will drop into that and they'll end up paying tax. Which means they might end up having a pay rise but being worse off. And that happened to me quite a few times when I worked for the NHS. Like, I was always borderline of wherever the tax things were. And whenever I got a wage rise, it took me to the next level and ended up with less money than I had prior to the wage rise. So, yeah, I don't think putting wages up necessarily is a good thing. Um, the help for energy is going to carry on, but it's only going to for people who are means tested. Uh, and council taxes are going to be allowed to go up um, by 5% without a referendum. Now, I didn't know they had to have a referendum, I'll be honest. But... Uh, yeah, we'll take that as, as red, shall we? Um, so, yeah, he he sat down uh, after giving all this. Um, oh, road tax as well. Electric cars from 2028 will have to pay road tax. Well, they're using the roads. So, uh, yeah, that makes sense. Uh, I think bikes should pay some kind of tax as well, uh, as in pedal bikes, because they're getting so much work done for them now um, that's interfering with everything else that I think they should start paying towards that rather than uh, us lot paying for it. But anyway, that's a story for another day. Uh, he sat down and the Labour Party stood up 
and just come out with the usual twaddle that they come out with. It's easier to criticise when you're not in power. Uh, and I still say to this day, thank God Corbyn did not get in uh, the last general election. Because can you imagine Corbyn, through Brexit, through Covid, through the war in Ukraine, through the global economic crisis, it's not just us who are suffering, it's everyone in the world who's suffering at the moment from inflation, fuel prices and all that. Having Corbyn in charge, oh my God, it would have been a disaster. I'm not saying that Sir Keir Starmer's going to be any better, but we'll have to... Uh, We'll have to wait and see on that one. Um, there was some other news as well, um, which was, well, a bit confusing really. Let's pull this one up, shall we? Uh, this is something that Have I Not Got News For You uh, recently tweeted, which is basically poverty, not, uh, not the UK's only problem, says Pudsey Bear. Bear in mind, it's children in need night tonight. After revealing he's been on the waiting list for a new eye patch since 2018. Well, I'll be honest with you, I think he's been on a waiting, pitch, a waiting list for a new eye patch for considerably longer than that because he's, been, he's had the same eye patch on, I think, since, well, before the year 2000. And he's still not had his eye sorted out. So, uh, yeah, the NHS are, are, are struggling. Um, shock news. Now, I reported a a while ago that neighbours had gone off air and you know we all remember Charlene and uh, the wedding and Madge and Bounce of the Dog. Uh, Hiya Angela, don't worry. I hope, I hope you dealt with them okay. Same as ominous that when I had to deal with someone. Shallow grave in the back garden, something like that, I don't know. Uh, oh, that's like, that's like a plot from uh, Neighbours isn't it? But yeah, uh, Neighbours is coming back and I've just noticed it says on there um, that that script says on it 2023 and that's when it's coming back Neighbours is coming back to Amazon of all people um, now I watched ironically only last week the last three episodes of Neighbours and they're all leaving and they're all moving out and then in the last five minutes about four of them decided to stay and so I'm like did they know before it shut down that Amazon were in talks for keeping it going. Um, but yeah, um, so you've got uh, the doctor there, his wife, and Toadie. Um, and <laughs> the guy who owns Lassiter's was going to sell Lassiter's, but then in the last minute decided to keep it. But I have to say, I mean, it's only been a few weeks, but I think he's let himself go a little bit. Um, I don't know what's happened there, whether he's just eating all the profits, but uh, yeah, um, hopefully he'll get on a diet before we uh, we get the, the TV show back on air again. Will I watch it? Probably not. Like I say, I only watched the last two episodes just to see what happened, and it was it was as naff as you'd expect it to be. There was even a nod to Bouncer in there somewhere, which I couldn't quite figure out. Um, meanwhile, in Qatar... You know, that place that deserves to uh, be held in the World Cup final. Um, you know, the human rights place. The uh, lack of tolerance for people's individuality um, of any kind. Um, yeah, that place that shouldn't be hosting the, the World Cup has decided two days before the World Cup starts that they're not, after all, going to sell alcohol at the stadia they're only going to sell alcohol in designated areas away from the stadia uh, and even then at a very reduced rate and Budweiser who've paid millions and millions and millions of uh, dollars to sponsor this and have their name all over it have now been basically told that what they've got to do is they've got to uh, only sell alcohol free which is the blue stuff now whether they've got enough of that nearby to ship it in in two days I don't know but either way, it's an absolute cluster. And I'm pretty sure, and I, I would hope, I mean, I'm not a fan of football anyway, and I must admit, I'm being a bit hypocritical because I do watch, I don't watch it live, and I don't pay any money to watch it, but I do watch the Qatar Grand Prix when it's on. Um, but watching the World Cup uh, in a country that shouldn't be hosting the World Cup at all, it's got no interest in football prior to this, or whatever, it's an absolute 
unbelievable mess. And like I said last week, even Seth Blatter, who was the uh, former leader of the old um, FIFA, who agreed to have this in Qatar, has said that they made a mistake. Well, we could have seen that, like, when they got through to the last three, or whatever. Meanwhile, in the happy world of Twitter, you remember Elon Musk? He bought it and said he was going to make it the best thing uh, in the whole world for social media. He's going to make it part of his new X thing that he's, uh, he's bringing out, uh, which is going to be a new app and all this kind of stuff. And then he, he fires, like, just short of half the members of staff worldwide of Twitter. Um, and then he sends um, um, an email out to all the engineers saying that you're going to work longer hours um, for the same money um, and you're going to not be able to talk to anyone like the press or anything like that uh, and if you don't then you're out on your ear so loads of them resigned instantly and now at this exact moment in time no one can get into the offices because Elon Musk has locked everyone out of the offices all over the world uh, they're all locked up which means basically at the moment Twitter is running with no one monitoring it who can actually do anything about it if anything goes on there that shouldn't go on there. So what could possibly go wrong? Well done Elon Musk. You're a genius. So I don't want Twitter to go, but I don't want Elon Musk to have it for any longer. So I'm kind of hoping that um, he will either sell it or not control it anymore and walk away from it and get someone in who can actually run it properly um, and sensibly. I mean, you come up with this thing that you've got to pay for your blue tick. So, so you're like, right, okay then. But then anyone can apply for a blue tick. So I could set up uh, a YouTube channel, uh, not a YouTube channel, sorry, a Twitter channel um, saying that I'm Donald Trump and get a blue tick on it so people will think I was Donald Trump and then just come out with a load of crap. Bad example because Donald Trump does come out with a load of crap anyway. But um, it's it, it's weird. So then he come up with this brilliant idea of, right, well, what we'll do is, as well as the blue tick, which you have to pay for, we'll also give um, a grey bit underneath which says, let's have a look, I can't remember what it says now, I'll be honest with you. Uh... Um, did um, did um, so assume me Twitter's still going. Yeah. Yeah, Twitter's still going. Uh, oh, there you go. It says official. So, I don't know if you can see that, actually. Let's uh, close that down. Click on OK. And then, so you see at the top there, it says official. You can't really read it because it's blurring. It's too close to the camera. Um, but yeah, it says official. Um, so you've got that now as well as the tick. So, yeah, it makes more sense. He's a silly man. Yes, he is. So it's a Facebook owner. Well, they're daft as well, so probably not. Uh, me to run Twitter. Oh my God, no. <laughs> not with my... Uh, hey, you can't say that. Nope, you can't say that. You can't... What, what are you on about? You can't be doing that. No, 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 no. I'd be, I'd be a nightmare. Um... I think you like this though that you missed um, earlier on, so I'll have a quick recap on uh, where is he? Uh, Crybaby Ronaldo. Look at him there, looking all upset and emotional. Uh, and I did say, you know what that reminds me of? More than a little bit. Um, I mean, considerably more than a little bit. As soon as I saw that picture, it instantly reminded me of Princess Diana. Um, so, yeah. <laughs> Oh, I thought Ronaldo doesn't end up the same way, eh? Anyway, what else have we got going on? Is there anything else that I missed out? Uh, no, no, I think I've done everything. There's not really been a lot of news since politics has kind of calmed down a bit. Uh, we've not had a lot of news uh, to do with the politics, so it's uh, a little bit depressing in that respect. But never mind, because it's time now already for, I've said that, we're half an hour in, uh, <laughs> for, da, 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 da. meanwhile, in America, um, this is where we look at the American news, uh, stuff 
that is happening in America and stuff that America is reporting uh, in their own unique way. Um, copyright etc. belongs to uh, the New York Post for most of this stuff. Um, but it is highly amusing. Um, but not all the time. I just said highly amusing and then I've just realised what the first story is and it's not amusing at all. Um, Alec Baldwin. Now, he was the actor who was uh, accused of... Well, he, he did shoot on set the uh, deputy... Um, oh, no, not the deputy. The uh, camera woman thing. Um, uh, cinematographer. Not a word I use a lot, so that's why I forgot what it was. Um, he's now suing crew members of Rust for handing him a loaded gun. So rather than taking responsibility and checking what he's been handed before he fired it in someone's chest, he's now suing the people who give it him. Um, now, the people are, are suing him as well for obviously shooting the poor old lady. Um, and it's, it's all getting very complicated. But then, as we find out last week or whatever, in a, in a week or two, they're going to resume filming on the same set where the woman died to finish the film off and I'm like no the film is cursed just let it go do the follow-up to I don't know Frozen or something you know let it go meanwhile Donald Trump oh I love Donald Trump um <laughs> as referred to here as grumpy Donald Trump spotted at daughter Tiffany's wedding rehearsal now I didn't know he had a daughter called Tiffany so, there you go. I mean, wasn't she the one who used to sing in the shopping malls? Um, what was the song? She used to sing. She used to sing. It was, it was, she had big hair and everything. It was a really good song. I can't remember what it was called. Uh, it was on one of them 80s TV things that was on recently. So, yeah, it was it's well worth looking at. Anyway, um, Donald Trump, a grumpy-looking former president, was spotted at his daughter Tiffany's wedding rehearsal at mar a -Lago on Friday. 76-year-old former president, fresh off a racially uh, insensitive, a radically insensitive attack against uh, Virginia Glove, uh, Governor Glenn Yukong, donned a navy blue suit, sans tie, as he glumly walked Tiffany, 29, down the aisle before she set, before she set to tie the knot. So, uh, yeah, uh, good old Donald Trump. You've got to, you've just got to, haven't you? Uh... Trump resorts to memes um, and he's basically photoshopped a one of the um, Arab um, sheikhs um, giving the finger to Biden. Now you remember this was a picture that was up a while ago. Uh, he's like a child, he's 76 years old, he's a former president, he's a more moderately successful businessman but yeah it's like a, a spoiled brat. Mind you, Boyd, uh, Biden, well, he, he, he just acts like a confused old man, which is probably what he is. Uh, Biden thanked Colombia instead of Cambodia for hosting Asian summit in latest GAF. Now, Colombia and Cambodia, they're not even remotely the same. The only thing they've got in common is the ending ear, and they start with a k. Other than that, completely... Um, Oh, I don't know. Mike, uh, Biden is so much better. A guy doesn't even know what day it is. Exactly, that's what I'm saying. I'm not arguing with you, uh, Mr. Hunt. Uh, I'm not saying your name, obviously. Um, but, yeah, Biden is a... Well, he, if, we just laugh at him. I mean, you know, everyone laughed at uh, Liz Trust, including us, and Boris Johnson, including us. But the last two presidents uh, that the United States have had, well, yeah... Uh, Rockefeller Centre Christmas tree arrives in the Big Apple. Good news, folks. It's middle of December and the Christmas trees are going up all over the world. Uh, the Christmas season inch closer the Big Apple on Saturday with the arrival of the Rockefeller Centre tree. A small crowd of hearty spectators brave rainy morning, uh, braved a rainy morning to lay eyes on the 80-foot tall. Why would you go to watch a lorry deliver a tree that's literally wrapped up? What? I, I, I don't get it um, at all. I mean, it's like, 
Oh, look, it's a truck. It's not even the bloody Coca-Cola truck. That would make more sense. Um, they've also had a hurricane in America, which is unusual for this time of year. Um, Hurricane Nicole. Nicar? Papa? Um, made landfall on the East Coast on Thursday in Florida early Thursday morning, leaving five people dead and millions in damage in its wake. Um, you know, global warming is a thing. We can't argue about that. It is a thing, and we need to do stuff about it, but there's ways of doing it, and there's ways of not doing it. And America needs to do more. China needs to do more. India needs to do more. Uh, the rest of the world needs to do more as well. But those, and Russia, stick Russia in there with the others. So Russia, America, China, and India, they need to really do something really quickly because they are pumping out more crap than anyone else. But we can't switch off the oil overnight. Uh, and people who think we can are, well, living in Clyde Cuckoo land. Um, Trump, who's uh, up for having to go and discuss what went on in the January the 6th last year, when uh, there was a bit of a, a rucker, um, is trying to block it now. Uh, he's filing a lawsuit so he doesn't have to go uh, to talk to the committee uh, who were investigating the attack on the uh, US Capitol. Um, I think he's got no choice. Uh, he's got to go because, well, he's the reason it happened, isn't he? That's what the rest of the world thinks, anyway. Uh, a semi, a semi, slams into a bus carrying Chicago student athletes, injuring 16 people. Now, what we don't forget, what we seem to forget in the UK is that America has weather a lot worse than us. Uh, yeah, absolutely. Uh, thoughts and prayers for everyone involved in all hurricanes and everything else. But, like I say, we need to do something about it. And same with this as well, all the people injured. Um, the, amazingly, one of the teenagers was ejected from the coach bus thing uh, and thankfully uh, survived. Severely injured. But it survived, and I can only assume that's because they're athletes, and uh, obviously they're, they're quite fit. Uh, that's the whole point of being an athlete. You are a fit human being, so you're more likely to survive stuff like that. Um, but, not to worry, <laughs> because rats, it's been reported, like music, and they have rhythm, and they like Lady Gaga and Queen. I mean, that's a hell of a combination. Um... Now, I saw this on the news, and I was expecting the rat to be kind of going, you know, like a, when you see a cockatiel or something dancing to the music, you know, it kind of does that, it gets its wings out and does all the all the actions and everything. I was expecting some, not exactly the same as that, because they don't have wings, they're rats, but I was expecting a little bit more than it just wandering around its little box thing. And I'm like, and that's, that's a rat with a rhythm? I mean, let's be honest. You know, you're never further than 12 metres away from a rat, no matter where you are. So, uh, that's the kind of story that's on the front page of the Daily Star, absolutely. It probably was, to be fair. Um, but this was University of Tokyo. Uh, they played music for 10 rats, uh, fitted with wireless accelerometers to measure their head movements. Oh, that was a little boxing they had on the head. Uh, so apparently, them going like that, looking for food, is them dancing. Now, how many times have we had a tragic story of a young child shooting a sibling or friend with a gun that they shouldn't have access to in America? A 13-year-old son of a corrections officer accidentally killed his 11-year-old brother on Thursday while fiddling around with a handgun. Um, the guy was a correction officer. I mean, that means responsibility, yet left a gun around for his kids to find, and tragedy ensued. America, I've said this before, I'll say it again, wake the cup. Uh, there was one a few weeks ago about zombie pigeons. Yes, there was. Yeah, I think we had that on here as well. Now, everyone knows who watches this channel, that I don't like e-scooters or e-bikes. I think they're a false economy. I think they're dangerous. And the fact you can hire them, uh, and the only 
means of hiring one that is needed in a busy city centre or a, a town or university campus or whatever is the fact that your credit card works and that is it. You don't need any um, safety gear, you don't need any pads, you don't need any uh, helmets, you don't need to have a test to prove that you're competent at, at, at driving the thing. Um, you just get on it and off you go. And I'm amazed that not as many people um, have been urchin, hurt or injured um, than... Uh, uh, no, I'm, I'm amazed more people haven't been hurt or injured than have. But this is a, another one. A 23-year-old man uh, drove into a uh, guy on a, a, an e-scooter uh, in his 40s uh, and the guy on the e-scooter died. Now, you see him whizzing around. I'm doing a lot of stuff going around Manchester at the minute and you see him, you see people riding around with like two or three people on an e-scooter and they're just cutting in between the traffic. They're going cross roads because cross zebra crossings, three red lights. And you're like, how, how is this legal? Whereas if I went out and bought from a reputable uh, shop an electric scooter and then I, I you know, did all the right things, maybe got some shoulder pads and, and I took it steady and, you know, had the safety pat on and all that kind of gubbins. And then I went out on the road. I get arrested by the police and that the thing took off me because you're not allowed to ride them in a public space, either on the road or on the footpath. They're only You can only ride them when you're on private land. But you can hire one. I could hire one immediately. The police took one off me in Manchester and carry on my journey and they wouldn't be able to do anything about it. What is the logic? And the, the answer is that the council or someone, the council are getting money for the company who are getting the money off you. Um, so it's all right. But if you buy an e-scooter privately and use it, then it's not all right. But you're more likely to look after it and treat it well and not run people over. So, uh, yeah, I think they're a nightmare waiting to uh, happen. And again, thoughts and prayers with the family of the uh, gentleman involved. The man who lived in the Paris airport for 18 years, who inspired Steven Spielberg movie, uh, The Terminal, uh, has died. Um, he was an Iranian man, and he lived in, eight, in the Paris Charles de Gaulle airport, and um, he, uh, he was there for 18 years. I mean... I, I always thought, well, I've never seen, I've never seen the terminal because I don't like, I don't like Tom Hanks. I can't stand him. He gets on my skin. It just it irritates me. The only thing I liked him was Big. Um, I've watched him in other things that I can't stand. So I wouldn't watch the terminal. I didn't watch the one where he was on the island talking to a basketball either. Um, but yeah, it's the guy was allowed to live in an airport terminal. I mean, surely to God. It would have been easier for the airport authorities to actually just pay for a hotel room for him to live there rather than having live in a, such an area. I, I, I never understood it. But anyway, sadly, he's, he's passed away. I've never been abroad, so I've never been to Charles de Gaulle Airport, so I've never seen him. But uh, yeah, uh, he, he inspired a movie. And Tom Hanks got a load of money for it. I bet he didn't get any money for it, did he? Even though he was the inspiration behind it. Uh, more tragedy in America uh, this is the follow up to what we were talking about earlier um, the two Dallas uh, vintage World War 2 planes that uh, collided uh, mid air uh, killing all on board uh, the NTSB are trying to uh, figure out what happened uh, looking at the footage it looked like the bigger plane was on its regular whatever it is it was doing, it, it didn't swerve or anything, but the other plane kind of just come in from a weird angle and may not have even seen the uh, the bigger plane. To be fair, the bigger plane would have known nothing about this. Um, but again, absolute tragedy. The only thankful thing is that uh, no one on the ground was hurt or injured um, because these things can be very random. And as we found out in Britain, uh, when we had a, a disaster at an air show, um, the people on the ground are can be as at greater risk than the people in the air if things go wrong. Now this is old news. 
Republicans are one win away from regaining control of the House um, of Representatives, I think it is. Um, and they've actually got it now, which means that Biden has got his hands tied behind his back and he's unlikely to be able to get anything through um, that he needs to get through to try and stop the American economy tanking more than it already is. Harvey Weinstein's genitalia. Oh, God. I'm so glad I'm not on the jury in America at the moment. Um, I mean, what a fish like, uh, you know, looks like. I've, I've, oh, I don't want to know. I'll be honest with you. Um, it's, it, it, it's just, I, I mean, if, if people start talking about your deformed genitalia, then you would, you'd probably say, look, you know, I don't want the whole world knowing about this, so I'll admit to anything, um, rather than having it dragged through the courts for, but, oh, God, being on the jury. Ooh, ooh. Um, now, this reminded me of uh, me playing uh, Battlefield Bad Company 2. Uh, a Ukrainian sniper kills a Russian soldier in a near record-breaking shot. The Ukrainian military claims one of its snipers gunned down a Russian soldier from 1.68 miles away. The second longest combat kill ever recorded. Dramatic video shared by the Ukrainian Military Office of Strategic Communications shows the enemy shoulder dropper dropping after being struck by the round fired from the equivalent of about 30 football fields away. Um, the Occupy was eliminated by pre a pre precise shot of our special forces. And you've got to admit, that is a shot and a half. Um, obviously, again, sadly, someone's died um, who probably didn't even want to be in Ukraine at the time. It's all to do with Putin. It's all Putin's fault. But uh, when you're dealing with people who can shoot you from uh, over one and a half miles away, I think uh, I'd be uh, getting in my vehicle and, and traipsing back to uh, mummy and daddy because uh, you ain't going to win this war. And uh, when I was playing Battlefield Bad Company 2, there was a map called Heavy Metal. And um, there was a... Uh, you had to capture a flag, which was near one of the bases. Um, and it was on a bit of a hill. And then there was a village in the town with another flag. And then there was another um, little area with a third flag that you had to catch. Um, now, next to the village was a hill going up which had a, a very prominent ridge on it all the way up and you used to get snipers on there and I was on the ridge behind the other flag um, and I got my sniper rifle out and I'm, I'm looking at this guy and he's just perched on the hill I couldn't record it at the time because you couldn't do that now obviously I, I would have done by now I would have done if I could have done and um, yeah hi Mike Vitti and uh, I lined it up and I zoomed in as far as I could and you know, you get the, the circle and you get the cross in the middle of it. And I thought, well, in this game you get bullet drop. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to go up a notch. So the guy's head was here in the middle. So I went up, 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 up. And I went, so it was just outside the actual um, site. But I knew I was in line with it. And I fired one shot. And after about a second it come up with a headshot. And <laughs> I was like, get in. And literally... He was, I mean, I had a 50-odd inch TV. I'd zoomed in as much as I can, and he was still only that big on the screen. Um, so, yeah, uh, I was I was quite impressed. But obviously, not doing it in real life. And you've got to remember that you can't respawn in real life either. Um, but no, cracking shot. And what are you doing? Get out. Cheeky cat going underneath my blanket that I've got covering stuff um, but yeah uh, where are we uh, it's got oh there he is there he is this is a uh, a mess uh, German soldiers mistakenly issued form, uh, uniforms with the SS labels on it um, they've been ordered to rip the labels off the uniforms after they was mistakenly issued uh, with initials SS. Now, it's not the SS that you're thinking it is. Um, it's just the fact... No, kitties run off now. It's just the fact that um, 
they had the the letters SS uh, on on show on the uniforms of German soldiers, so they've been told to take them off. Whoa, whoa, whoa! Donald Trump uh, was advertising and be going on about the fact that he's going to uh, make a special announcement on Tuesday. It was so exciting. Uh, it was expected to announce his third straight bid for the White House. And it was going to be at 9pm at the Mar-a-Lago Mar estate. More of that later. Meanwhile, what the heck? The Paris Olympic Games mascot is compared to a chorus in sneakers by critics. Um, these characters have recently hit the sweet spot. Uh, snarky French critics have declared that each of the newly unveiled Paris Olympic mascots look like giant chorus. Uh, in sneakers, with one French publication even declaring that that's good news. The red triangle-shaped mascots for the 2024 Olympic and Paralympic Games in Paris are supposed to resemble a traditional Figran hat worn in the French Revolution. But no, they look like... There it is. But not to worry. Majority of voters say Trump should do this ahead of Mar-a-Lago 2024 speech. A majority of Americans believe Donald Trump should not run for president again, a new poll reveals. Um, so this is before he actually made any announcements. Um, a lot of speculation was going on. Um, Trump cries election fraud. Well, that's new, isn't it? After Carol Lake's loss in Arizona. Uh, former President Trump was backpedalling election fraud claims ahead of his expected announcement that he will be launching a 2024 presidential bid Tuesday night. Uh, talking, uh, taking to Truth Social, which is this, after ally Carrie Lake lost the race for Arizona governor, he falsely claimed that the election was stolen from her. Wow, they just took the election away from Carrie Lake. It's really bad out there. This guy is, oh, he's so dangerous. So dangerous. He'd have pressed the button uh, if he was president when that missile accidentally landed in Poland. I swear to God. Video shows Russians stealing zoo animals amid Curzon ret retreat. Uh, even zoo animals are giving invaders a hard time. Russian soldiers viciously wrestled Ukrainian zoo animals into cages and vehicles during the retreat from the city of Curzon video shows. Um, they take anything, don't they? Remember last week, they, they took one of them little choo-choo trains that, yeah, that kiddies ride around in uh, places like zoos and things like that. They, they took one of them back with them as well. Um, it's mad. Uh, this is where common sense was starting to take over. The missile that hit Poland may have been fired by Ukrainian forces. I think it's all been proved now that it was. But it doesn't matter because Trump's back. Um... A low-energy bruised Trump 2024 announcement gets panned on Twitter. Former President Trump's long-anticipated launch of his 2024 White House campaign set off strong reactions on Tuesday, with conservatives and liberals alike expressing dismay. Uh, Donald Trump failed America, read a message posted from President Biden's personal account during the 76-year-old Trump's Mar-a-Lago address. Um, yeah, he's, he's he wants to run again. Now, bearing in mind that it's kind of gone very wrong for him, um, and the Republicans. I don't see how it's. Uh, I, I, I don't understand how it's going to work. But he wants to make America great and glorious again. Um, so that's something to look forward to. Sorry, sarcasm. Spoiled brat alert. Environmentalist in Vienna deface Gustav Klimt's uh, death and life painting with black oily liquid. A climate activist in Austria defaced a famous painting in a Vienna museum on Tuesday, the latest in a string of such protests targeting prices which of art in a call to action against fossil fuels. Now, these people, I mean, for a start, it's a black oily liquid, so it, it, it rather, we, we're, we're actually using against a work of art with an artist that's been dead for years in an art gallery that's got nothing to do with fuel. We're using an oily substance which is we've probably bought, or someone's bought somewhere along the line, from the companies we're objecting to, to prove the point of our protest. I mean, there was one being interviewed um, on Sky News, and I, I didn't see it on Sky News, but I watched it on YouTube, and uh, it was one of these women who had a you know stupid name. She was in her 
twenties probably, and uh, you know she had a name like India or uh, you know some uh, you know arty farty from middle class family, uh, and their argument is just so weak that what they're trying to do is to stop the world's um, from exploring new oil and coal things um, which is great but the problem we've got is we need the oil and coal wherever it is at the moment whilst we get into place the stuff that doesn't need it i.e. renewables i.e. nuclear power stations wind farms uh, wave farms um, that kind of thing we need to build all the other infrastructure before we can stop using and for these people who are middle-aged toffs, for want of a better description, uh, who've got nothing better to do, they don't have a job or anything, obviously they don't have a job, um, they just think that they've got a right to destroy things that don't actually prove the point. I, I just, my mind doesn't get it. Like I've said before, if they want to protest, then go to the House of Parliaments, go to your MP's office when he's doing one of his surgeries. Go to the oil companies, go to petrol stations, blockade them. That's how you make your protest. Chuck in soup, um, custard, oil-based product on works of art. Isn't proven anything, it's just proven that you're a spoilt brat. And I, I would quite happily put all these people on a bus and send them somewhere. Um, because we don't need them in the gene pool. The scary thing is... These lot will all meet up, have kids, and in 20 years' time, their kids will still be doing this, no matter what we've done in the meantime. It's a bit like, you know, no matter what the Tories do, like I uh, was talking about before, or Labour, when they're in power, the opposition will always rip it apart, because they haven't come up with the idea. Even the fact that, in the autumn statement, a lot of the stuff that the Tories did were actually less bad than feared, or considerably better than feared and some of the ideas were even better than what Labour had come up with um, like the 35% on the um, on the profits of oil companies and everything else and uh, the windfall tax um, they still slag it off and say oh you've done this that and the other you know the whole world's in a mess uh, we need to sort it out we need to go to be zero net zero and all that kind of stuff but it people throwing stuff over works of art is not going to help anything and people blocking the motorways the m25 or whatever isn't going to help anything either so yeah just chuck them all in a bus and there might be a cliff nearby i don't know oh I hate them a uh, pilot uh, was told a desantis 2024 banner and trolls trump ahead of expected white house bid so this is before um he actually um announced it but the guy flew over uh, and said, you lost again, Donald, uh, which I thought was actually really clever. Um, more of those on another thing that I do, which is, of course, the I'm a Celebrity Get Me Out of Here. We've got another lovely banner above a, a behind air, an aeroplane for that one. That's on Saturday, don't forget. Um, a Texas man fell to his death after dancing on top of a moving 18-wheeler semi or articulated lorry. Um, whatever you want to call them. Uh, he was dancing on top of the 18-wheeler. It passed under a bridge and he got knocked off. Well, killed, basically. I, I've, I've seen people doing it on trains and stuff like that. Uh, but has he never watched a James Bond movie where they're having a fight on a train or something and there's a low bridge coming up and Bond always manages to hold up the person in front of it? Again, it's a tragedy that someone died. It's more of a tragedy that there were people there to witness it because that would have been horrific. Um, but, yeah. You've, uh, you, you've, laid, yeah. <laughs> you've laid acting police chief knew that children were still alive and trapped inside the school before his police officers were sent in. Um, it was about 40 minutes before the officers finally went in uh, he knew there were eight to nine uh, children still alive and that it, there was a lot of victims in there as well and still didn't do anything and still has a job. I mean, again, what is going on in the world? 
Oh, this is interesting. Sperm counts worldwide have plunged 62% in under 50 years. Well, we know why that is. We're eating a lot more crap than what we were uh, 50 years ago. There's a lot more fast food out there. There's a lot more chemicals added to uh, processed foods. Uh, there's a lot more preservatives. There's a lot more toxins in the air than what there were then. Uh, I know there was a lot of uh, smog and stuff like that from coal-fired uh, chimneys and whatnot. But... Um, but because they, they test, they test people uh, on a regular basis. So it's it's definitely a thing, um, and it can't be a bad thing because the world's population this week has reached eight billion uh, people. Uh, now this is something I, I discussed a few weeks ago, which is if the population is growing, we need to find bigger ways or better ways of feeding the population. Or we need people to move away from areas where they can't sustain the population to areas where the population can be sustained. People are living longer. We're, we've got better medicines now. We, we can cure cancer. We can, um, if you get a disease, you're less likely to die from it now. I mean, you know, years ago, people would die from the cold or flu on a regular basis. People still do now, but far fewer. Uh, and because people look after themselves now and there's better hygiene than what there was, people are generally living longer. Now, they reckon it's going to peak um, to about maybe 10 billion, but then it's going to start dropping off again. But in countries like the United Kingdom and America and China, it's already dropping. It's only going up in countries like Africa and India and uh, Pakistan and places like that, which are developing countries. So... It, it's, it, it is complicated, but they're the countries that I think are less likely to be able to support them. So we're going to get a lot more crises going on. And obviously we get global warming as well. Uh, and crops fail more regularly because of the global warming. It's going to get worse. So maybe this is, you know, the, the world's way of trying to reduce the population. Could be. Um, I mean, don't get me wrong. It's not like... There isn't a lot of uh, sperm in there because it says there it's gone from uh, 102 million per milliliter to 49 million sperm per milliliter. So there's still a lot in there, but nowhere near as much as what there used to be. Um, and it, that might be a good thing for the uh, for the world, maybe. A south. West pilot was cheered for retrieving a passenger's phone from a cockpit window. Now, what was a passenger's phone doing in a cockpit window? No, no, I'm joking. Uh, most people cheer and clap, apparently, when an aeroplane lands. It's someone doing the job, isn't it? Um, if they didn't land it properly, then you'd have a reason to complain. But if they just if you just land a plane, uh, then that's what you're paid to do. So don't applaud them. But anyway, a Southwest Airlines captain went above and beyond the call of duty when he reached out of his window to retrieve a phone that a passenger had left behind before boarding. A video posted by the airline shows a pilot sticking out the cockpit window to grab a phone from the ramp worker that the plane had already left the gate. Um, yeah, and he got, he got cheered for it by the passengers. Ah. Uh. Donald Trump's 2024 announcement was ignored and downplayed on cable TV networks. Basically, the main channels in America couldn't be bothered with it. And I think, again, that's not a bad thing. Even, um, what does she call those? Which one is it? Uh, big names uh, didn't show up. Uh, and there were technical troubles as well, apparently. I didn't watch it. Um, his two eldest children didn't turn up uh, and only one sitting member of Congress turned up. Um, his daughter Ivanka Trump announced uh, that she was no longer going to be involved uh, in any of his um, plans uh, to be elected again anytime soon. So basically she's had enough of a dad and fair enough. Uh, oh hey Boris Everything's going to plan, in my opinion. Well, we can't argue with that. Federal agents, now these are the, well, they might not be the same federal agents, but there's the same organisation that raided the Mar-a-Lago um, place to get all the documents off Trump, have now 
uh, made a mysterious raid on Area 51's website, Creators Homes. So basically, they're trying to stop the people who are doing the websites basically calling out whatever's going on in Area 51. Um, <laughs> very funny, Angela. Just noticed that. We've got Boris Johnson, who's coming to the chat. Uh, obviously not the real one. Um, and Angela's put, uh, any more kids planned? Uh, hello, Angela. None yet. I didn't want the last one. Oh, cruel. Um, but yeah, they run articles posting theories about what goes on in the top secret base and everything, and they got raided um, by the uh, US Air Force and the FBI, um, which seems all a bit, you know, over the top. Let's be honest, these people are treated as weirdos by most people, so all you're doing is giving them some credence. A Russian, now this is unusual, I mean, you don't hear of this very often. Someone in Russia who's quite um, high up in various things, be it business or the government or the military, dying mysteriously. It's a very, very strange thing. Um, I'm, perfectly re I'm perfectly the real one, I'll have you know, waffle, waffle, bluster, bluster, bluster. I'm just messing, I love your answer, that should be up. Um, yeah, a Russian colonel tied to the mobilisation dies mysteriously. A high-ranking Russian army colonel with ties to Vladimir Putin's mobilisation efforts for the war in Ukraine died in mysterious circumstances this week. Uh, he was found dead in his office at the uh, Higher Naval School on Wednesday and early media coverage says that it was a suicide. Hmm... So we're getting all these people committing suicide in Russia who are highly involved and very close to Putin uh, and may have upset him in some way. Uh, they either seem to mysteriously fall out of high buildings or have a, some kind of car crash or get some mystery illness. It's, uh, yeah, suicide. I was on about rats before saying that, you know, the dancing rat, which wasn't dancing, it was just looking for food. Um, a rat was spotted in a shop window of a trendy New York City boutique. I mean, the the capital of the world for rats is probably New York City. Uh, it's massive, it's filthy, um, and the sewer system is, well, it's just a, a, a brooding ground, literally. Uh, so the surprise that a rat has made it into a posh boutique shop window. Um, to be fair, it looks quite a clean rat. Uh, it doesn't look dirty at all, so it's obviously a posh rat. And maybe looking for, uh, you know, a, a nice abode. Maybe one of the bags could make a nice net to have babies in. Or something simply. Uh, that reminds me of Roland. Great times. Hi, Paul. Um, yeah, Roland rat. Yeah, rat rapping. And all that kind of stuff. I actually bought that single. I wouldn't mind if I was an adult at the time. I still bought it anyway. I still got it somewhere. Mm, it's embarrassing, isn't it? Is all credibility. Um, here we go again. This is Russia pounding Ukraine with more missile and drone strikes targeting power supply. Now, as I said before, when they left Curzon, um, there's always going to be something to pay because whenever Putin doesn't get his way or things go badly, he spits his dummy out and then throws all his, his toys out the pram. Uh, and his toys are missiles and drones, which he's not thrown out of the pram, he's thrown out of his country and shoved them into Ukraine. And um, he's basically attacking the infrastructure of the country, which I said earlier on as well, uh, i.e. the electricity, um, power stations, the water treatment plants, and anywhere else that he can attack that's going to affect the country. Now, you're not allowed to target civilians. I mean, he does anyway. He blows up apartment blocks left, right and centre like, you know, he can do anything he wants. Um, but you're not allowed to target or affect the civilian population. And that's what he's, he's doing. And like I've said so many times before, we're letting him get away with it. And we shouldn't be letting him get away with it. We should be doing something, uh, even if it's invade Russia. We get to that stage now where something has got to be done. Mind you... This is a bit cheeky. Um, New Jersey um, highway uh, safety messages uh, have been told to uh, be a bit more serious. So uh, the feds have forced them to remove these um, <laughs> these messages that have been putting up. 
The highways are jammed with snarky road signs and the feds don't like it. Killjoys at the Federal Highway Administration have reportedly ordered New Jersey officials to stop putting up cute and funny messages uh, with uh, in-your-face safety warnings. For example, hold on to your butts, help prevent forest fires, get your head out your apps, and other ones like that. I think they are genius, to be fair. Um, obviously, they've had a lot of... Uh, obviously, well, it's winter now, so maybe not so much... But during the summer, they're getting a lot of uh, forest fires and everything, and cigarettes are, are, are often a great cause of them. So hold on to your butts, um, help prevent forest fires, gets the message across in a way that people would remember, and get your head out your apps, get your head out your apps when you're driving. Yeah, perfect as well. So uh, I think I think that is um, a, a clever thing to do. And, and, you know, we should have more of that. To be fair, we had a bit of that um, in Greater Manchester. We had these signs up that they put messages up that were sometimes quite amusing. Um, but got a message across that, you know, you don't want to you don't want to go there or this road's closed or whatever. But they did it in a, an amusing way, but they've stopped doing it now, which is a bit sad. A Texas she a teen, <laughs> Texas Sheen, um... 15 plus countries. What? Uh, a Texas she... Uh, done it again. A Texas teen shot by cops at McDonald's is awake, smiling and on the road to recovery, which is good news. The innocent Texas teen who was left in critical condition after being shot by a San Antonio cop while eating a burger in a McDonald's parking lot is seen smiling and awake in a new photograph by, shared by his family. That's after six weeks. Um... And they refer to it as an unfortunate event. Um, he was eating a burger in a car, in a car park. We've all done it. I do it all the time. Um, and he got shot by a copper. Oh, America. Wake the cop. Thank you. A Dutch court finds Russian missile struck down the 2014 Malaysia Airlines flight, killing all 298 on board, including uh, 10 uh, United Kingdom people. Um, it's took them, what, was that eight years? Yeah, eight years to find the Russians guilty when, if I remember rightly, within hours, it was Russians who were guilty of it, but they've actually narrowed it down to two people now who are not uh, actually in the dock. So they're still in Russia and they're not going to get extradited. Um, so it's kind of, they made an effort, but it's a bit like Lockerbie. Um, you're never ever going to get to the bottom of that one, unfortunately. Um, and it, it, it's just dug up a lot of old wounds for people, which I, I don't know. I don't know. Here's a happy story. What was that like to have a cute animal story? Aww. Although I don't think these elephants are particularly cute, I'll be honest. Uh, but rare twin elephants make history after being born at a New York zoo. Incredible rare twin elephants made history when they were born in an upstate New York zoo last month. Uh, how many zoos are there in New York? Uh, they welcomed not one, but two male Asian elephants when the set of twins were born to parents. Uh, Mally and Doc on October the 24th, the zoo announced. Staff at the zoo were shocked when the second calf was born about 10 hours after the first. Less than 1% of elephant births are twins. So uh, there you go, there's a happy story. It's not as cute as the monkey the other week, but I mean, it's... No, it's not as cute as the monkey the other week. We might have another cute animal coming up. This isn't it, though. Uh, Meta, the owners of Instagram and Facebook and... Uh, Angela's firm of choice for on in uh, Twitter, um, are to host a notorious B.I.G. virtual virtual reality concert with a realistic avatar. The legendary Brooklyn rapper, the notorious B.I.G., is coming back to life as a hyper-realistic avatar in recognition of the 21st anniversary of his death. Um, Meta, Facebook's parent company, and the notorious B.I.G. Estate are collaborating on the project entitled Sky's the Limit, a VAR concert experience on December the 16th. Um, 
I find it a bit creepy um, that they, they bring dead people back to life. I mean, got, you know, it's nice that they got the technology to do it. They did it recently for Abbott. They're not dead, but at least not time of recording. Um, but they brought ABBA back uh, as what they were like in the 70s and early 80s for some uh, VR um, holographic concert things that were going on. Um, this is, I think it's just basically meta trying to get people to buy the Oculus Rift which they bought and has bombed ever since um, because VR isn't great. Um, I think Elder should take Twitter over and kick Elon Musk into the curb. I, I think you're right. I think we should get rid of uh, Elon Musk. I think he's done enough damage already. He's, he's, he, uh, someone said on Twitter, actually, the other night, um, oh, it might have been last night, actually, because that's when Twitter was possibly going to just disappear overnight. My name is the famous F-A-T-T-Y. He could join me. <laughs> Very good, Paul. Um, what was I talking about then? Oh, yeah, uh, Twitter. And uh, some guy put up, uh, you know... Why is Elon Musk destroying Twitter so quickly? How is he managing this? And I put, I think he's getting advice off uh, Theresa May. Uh, not Theresa May. Uh, Liz Truss uh, on how to destroy something that's, you know, adequate. Not brilliant, but it'll do. Uh, in, like, two weeks. And, uh, yeah, it's happening all over the world. It's a shame someone can't take over Russia and just destroy them in two weeks. That'd be nice. But, no, I think it's a huge publicity stunts um they think that they're going to get loads of rap fans buying the vr headsets for their meta verse um so that they can make loads of money from it and i think it's a very cynical ploy but again what do i know it is a cynical ploy it is oh uh north korea fires ballistic missiles towards sea. Now this has caused a lot of upset, this this particular missile. Now like I've said for weeks, it's tit for tat. Uh, North Korea fire missiles towards South Korea's sea. South Korea fire missiles to North Korean sea as a reprisal. So then North Korea fire missiles to South Korean sea for firing missiles to the North Korean sea because they fire missiles to the South Korean sea. And then South Korea fire missiles to the Northern Sea because North Korea fire missiles to the Southern Sea because they fire missiles to the North Sea because North Korea fire missiles to the... And it kind of goes on and on and on and on. But this one got really, really close. I think it was less than 20 miles away from the coast. And uh, that's well within the uh, national waters of uh, South Korea. So we could be getting... Instead of getting World War Three from Russia and Poland and Ukraine... We might get World War Three from Korea. Mind you, we've still got China in the mix for um, going after, um, um, and it's a Thailand then. God. God. Taiwan. So I turn into uh, President Bush then. Uh, President Bush. See, I'm doing it. I'm just turning oh, no. Um <laughs> House of the Hippos. The zoo family drama as Fiona mates with stepdad Tucker. Um, Fiona, the uh, Cincinnati Zoo's famous female hippopotamus, easy for you to say, has been mating with the male that fathered her younger brother, according to a new report. But unlike the incestuous tigering clan in HBO's House of the Dragon, the unusual family dynamic isn't clearly as cringe as it seems because neither creature can appreciate the concept of stepchildren and baby. Wow, at last, someone's realised that animals are, have no concept. Like when I had... Oi! When I had a chat with the cat about um, her uh, licking the um, sweet chilli off a plate and then the following day having painful poos. Um, anyway. <laughs> um, it's, it is... And it's stepdad anyway. So, not like it's going to end up with two heads or anything if they have a baby. But, oh, aren't they cute? Yeah, okay. I know, a bit sick. But we like it. We like it like that. Um, Ellen Goldberg's family seek an overturn ruling. She committed suicide after being stabbed 20 times. Oi! Psst. Um, 
For more than a decade, the family of a woman stabbed 20 times, including 10 times from behind, have battled to have the Philadelphia Medical Examiner's, examiner's ruling that her death was suicide overturned. Now, she was found covered in bruises and stabbed to death in her apartment during a blizzard more than a decade ago. And they are saying the official cause of death was suicide. So you're bruised and stabbed ten times in your back and ten other times and that's suicide. Um... Uh, yeah, American justice, if that's it, or whatever, it makes no sense, makes no sense. A college student is sentenced to 10 years for selling 73 guns to an undercover cop. A former college student who made his uh, Dean's List was slapped with a 10 year prison sentence after he admitted to selling more than 70 guns to an undercover cop. Um, I still love the picture of that cute little monkey that was born in captivity a few weeks ago. Yeah, it was cute. I've, I've used it as a thumbnail for that for that one, so you can always look at the thumbnail whenever you go into the uh, the playlist. Um, Shakur Shah was uh, also sentenced to five years post-release supervision for trafficking 73 weapons and 40 high-capacity magazines from the south to his native Bronx and Manhattan. Um, yeah. <laughs> it's America and guns. Uh, what's this one? We'll go for this one first. Uh, Twitter employees uh, leave in droves after Musk's hardcore ultimatum. And like I said earlier on, uh, there's no one left to fix things. Hundreds of Twitter employees apparently quit on Thursday after new CEO Elon Musk gave workers an ultimatum. Uh, commit to a hardcore work environment or be fired. The reported exodus, exodus threw Twitter into more turmoil and came as st uh, staffers at the social media giant were given a 5pm Thursday deadline to sign into Musk Workplace Pledge. Um, yeah, the guy is... I, I just fear that he might want to be Prime Minister, uh, President one day and we think Donald Trump was bad. Can you imagine him as President? It's... yeah. No. Please. God. No. Tesla, Elon Musk car, burst into flames on a Pennsylvania highway. A Tesla was burnt beyond recognition after a large piece of debris became lodged underneath the car. A local outlet reported a family en route to visit a relative in Massachusetts pulled over on the Interstate 80 when the Tesla model started smoking. Uh, the Morris Township Volunteer Fire Department battled with the fierce flames and smoked for two hours due to the Tesla's lithium-ion battery. The department estimated around... Uh, 12,000 gallons of water we needed to put the fire out. Now, again, if you go back and listen to some of my um, broadcast podcasts, if you're listening to this, you'll know that I am not a fan of um, batteries in cars because when they catch fire, they keep burning and it takes a lot of effort to put them out. 12,000 gallons of water to put out one car. Can you imagine... If all the cars are electric and it's a foggy day and they all pile into each other and they all catch fire, that is going to be burning for months. Um, batteries are not environmentally friendly. They are not, by any stretch of the imagination, green energy whatsoever. What do you do with the batteries when they run out? Where do you get the precious metal from to make them? Slave labour, child labour to get it out. Then you have to ship it around the world. It's complete nonsense. What we need to do is we need to develop hydrogen power that way We've already got petrol stations that can cope with that, just could be modified slightly rather than putting cables covered in plastic all the way around the world to charge up all these electric cars and then have to build more power stations or you burn more oil or diesel to charge the things up in the first place. Complete waste of time and this adds to my argument 12,000 gallons of water to put out one car. I mean, come on world, wake up. I wouldn't mind. Elon Musk has even said that they're not really the future, um, they're just a temporary stopgap, but we need to get hydrogen up there. And the last story is a creepy one. Do, 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 pink. Do, 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 do. That's my impression of uh, X-Files. Hundreds of sheep have been walking in a circle for 12 days straight in China. Um... 
<laughs> hundreds of sheep have been eerily walking around in a circle for 12 days straight in northern China's Inner Mongolia region. The bizarre behaviour captured on surveillance video shows a large flock continuously marching clockwise in a near-perfect circle on a farm. Some other sheep can be seen spectating from outside the rotation, uh, while others at times stand motionless. So what is going on? What is going on? I will leave you with that. Because that is the end of today's broadcast. Still managed to get an hour and 25 minutes of it. I thought it would have been a lot less than that, I'll be honest. Um, because I didn't feel as, there was as much, but there you go. So uh, I'll give a big shout out to everyone who's commentated. Uh, so Angela, uh, thank you very much. Uh, Mr Hunt, uh, thank you. Uh, McVitie, Boris, good old bumbling Boris. Paul, uh, thank you all very much for joining in uh, in the conversation. Come on, what? The news never stops. It does hear, mate. Um, if you want another live broadcast, I'll be doing one again tomorrow at some point. Uh, Mid-evening tomorrow night, um, it's going to be the... Um, I'm a celebrity to get me out of here. Uh, because, I'll be honest with you, it did a lot better than I was expecting it to do. Uh, the I'm a celebrity to get me out of here one. So, uh, yeah. The I'm a celebrity get me out of here roundup. Uh, where we are discussing my least favourite... And my favourite uh, campmates, um, we discuss the tasks and usual gubbins that goes on in the camp. And this time, I've, I've numbered everything so that I'll be able to do it in the correct order as well. So we'll have a look at the surf and turf, we'll have a look at the scary um, fun fair. Uh, we'll have a look at the Chris Miles uh, crapping himself and dropping things. Um, so that'll be uh, tomorrow. Uh, mid-evening, uh, probably after 8 o'clock. Uh, might be later than that, I don't know. It depends where I'm up to and where I'm going. Uh, good streaming uh, by you. Thank you, Paul. I think someone's been on the uh, the brandy a bit too soon, though. So, <laughs> so yeah, uh, I'm a Celebrity uh, 2022 Roundup. Um, you can join in the chat there as well. You can let me know what you think of the various uh, campmates. What you think of the stories, what you think of the Anton Deck jokes, etc, etc, etc. So that will be the um, the one we're doing tomorrow. Uh, obviously tonight someone's been evicted, so we'll be discussing that tomorrow as well. And also predicting who's going to win and who I don't want to win. Do you really want to vote me out? Yes I do, because you're annoying me. Uh, but yeah, you'll find out all about that tomorrow, who I don't like in the uh, in the camp um, and it's, weirdly, it's not who you think it might be. So uh, I will leave you with um, the old um, Pudsy Bear, because let's be honest, it is a uh, Children in Need night as well. So uh, poverty, not the only UK's problem, says Pudsy Bear, after revealing he's been on the waiting list for a new eye patch since 2018. So that is it. Thank you very much for watching, if indeed you still are. Uh, and I will see you all again uh, next time. Uh, until then... Oh, don't forget it's on podcast as well. Blink when it goes up.